everyone. My name is Ace Barrera. I am the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at the University of Maine. Thank you so much for joining the uh, Maine Business School Accepted Student Session uh, tonight. Um, we are going to wait maybe another minute or so to make sure that everybody is uh, logging in to this session. While you are already here, if you uh, would like to uh, uh, just use the chat feature, mention where you're from, the major within the business school that you're planning on pursuing. It's always great to see where people are coming from across the nation and also the majors that they're planning on um, pursuing here at the University of Maine. Again, my name is Ace Barrera from um, the admissions office. If you are just logging in right now, um, if you would like to use the chat feature to uh, just mention where you're coming from and also the major that you are planning on pursuing here at the University of Maine, it's always great for us to know um, where our students are coming from and the different majors within the main business school that they're planning on pursuing. But whatever you pursue, it'll be wonderful. This is a awesome. great place. We're excited that you're here. Especially if you pursue entrepreneurship. <laughs> Which is his field. <laughs> well, it's 6.03. Um, let's do some introductions. My name is Melanie Brooks, and I am the Marketing and Communications Manager at the Maine Business School. Um, I'm going to introduce my awesome team that is here tonight. And when I say your name, just give a wave. Um, Dr. Faye Gilbert is the Dean of the Maine Business School, and we are so happy she is here tonight. Dr. Jason Harkins is the Associate Dean of the Maine Business School and the proponent of entrepreneurship. We have um, Cindy D'Angelo, who is the director of our undergraduate admission, uh, not admissions, undergraduate advisor, advisory team. So she'll have lots of answers, I hope, for your many questions. We're also joined by two of our current students, Nicole Pelletier and John Libby. They're here to answer any questions you might have for current students. They are both graduating in May, and we really appreciate um, them taking the time to be here with us tonight. And we appreciate you being here. There's so many of you. It's so nice to see you. Uh, we're going to kick this event off with a short presentation. And we hope after your presentation, you guys have lots of questions. So I am going to start sharing my screen and pass it over on to Dean Gilbert. Give me one moment. Love that you're beginning to put things in the chat and hope you will ask questions in the chat. And welcome to the Accepted Students Day with the Maine Business School and congratulations. It is always nice to see students thinking ahead of where they wanna go and what they wanna do and selecting a Maine Business School is a wise decision. We're accredited and high quality and we're very excited to share a little bit with you this evening about it, what it means to be a business black bear. So I'll begin by talking about University of Maine itself, though I'll keep it brief. The University of Maine is located in Orono, Maine. And so it's within close driving distance to Acadia National Park, Far Harbor, or to Mount Katahdin, or to Portland, Sorry. or to other areas on the coast. Sorry about that, everybody. Let's try Sorry. that again. technical difficulties. I'm just going right on. Here we go. Go for it. Difficulties. So it's a, you know, it's uh, the adventures that you have from here are many. This fall, we may have one where you're hiking and camping and studying the business of the outdoors to begin at the University of Maine. But our students, the people you're going to meet once you're here, they come from all over the United States and other countries. Uh, it is University of Maine is the flagship institution in the University of Maine system. So it's large. We have about 12,000 students, but not so large that you can get lost. So we are consistently ranked as one of the safest states in the nation. 
And as I've already mentioned, Orono is really in the heart of Maine. So you're within easy driving distance wherever you want to go um, with 12,000 students. We have over 200 student clubs and organizations at the University of Maine, out, a lot of access to outdoor recreation opportunities. There are hiking trails on our campus, as well as directly off the campus across the street from my house. It's just, if you wanna hike and walk uphill flat lands, you can find some place to go. We're also division one athletics, and we have over a hundred degree programs for you to choose from. It is a wonderful, rich environment with a lot of options and a lot of choices. And now for why, well, I got a business. chance. Why study business? business? <laughs> I'll turn it back to you. Um, I'll get started with this one. One of the reasons why I chose to study business at the University of Maine and with the Maine Business School is because of the program. As Dean Gilbert mentioned, we are an AACSB accredited program, which is really that, you know, gold mark on your business program. It sets you apart from other colleges in the nation. It's, it's an accreditation given to very few colleges. Um, not only that, but the environment of MBS, it's like a close community within the Greater University of Maine campus, as well as all the experiences and opportunities that the university and that MBS gives to us. Um, there are really countless opportunities that we're presented with in each major specific, as well as just getting us ready to be part of the business world. Um, so you really get all the tools that you need from MBS. And I'll brag on Nicole a little bit. She was part of a team that just within the last two weeks, a week, uh, they went to the state competition for chartered financial analyst and took tops in the state. Second year in a row that the main business school team has come in first in the state, but congratulations, Nicole. And then Jonathan. Yeah, um, you know, one thing that's really great about the business school at UMaine is um, the professors here are really awesome. They're really uh, willing to work with you and talk with you and spend time with you. They want to see you succeed. Um, the, again, the, um, I was supposed to talk about the career flexibility. The cool thing about a business major is the, uh, the cool thing about a business major, especially a business major at UMaine, I think, is that the classes are incredibly both, they both have classes that are incredibly technical, but also some that are overarching and conceptual. And that's actually really important if you want to pursue business in either way. You have to be able to understand like, you know, how an engine works, but also the parts that go into an engine. And I really think they do a good job, you know, when it comes to actually how to build anything or do anything in life. And when it comes to like a career, they, they, do, they do a good job teaching the technical as well as the holistic approach to how to understand a problem. Um, and so I think um, that's a really cool thing about the business school. Um, as a transfer, I really appreciated that in my experiences with professors and they, they wanted me to succeed, you know. And, and yeah, and Jonathan, can you talk a little bit about, because you're at that point where you're making this decision, but you've got one degree and two mm -hmm. paths. So can you talk a little bit about the options that you're looking at and, and what you think uh, studying business did to prepare you for the two different ways you could go? Yeah, so I studied finance and um, financial economics. I got a BS in uh, finance and a BA in financial economics. Um, I really, um, so I'm either looking about going a corporate um, route at a Fortune 500 um, or in management consulting um, or strategy consulting, whether it's internal in a company or just solving problems for a company or straight into entrepreneurship. I have a couple startups um, that are, I'm in the conversation with about joining to really uh, build out different departments, which is really exciting. Um, I think what the business school really prepared me for um, is uh, for the consulting side, um, you know, uh, they, I, I took some really great courses. I didn't take the full course that you made, but um, some courses that really stuck out to me were the uh, capstone did a really good job of helping you understand what a consultant actually does. You know, a consultant's job is to really solve problems and go and actually understand both the quantitative, like the actual like numbers problems, but also the qualitative. What is the real issue going on here? And how to explore and actually look at a problem and explore and solving it. That's what consultants do regularly. They just solve problems and, um, that's kind of what you, they kind of they kind of teach you to do when your capstone is like you have all this knowledge you've gone all this accounting experience and the finance experience and general business experience how do you take it now to solve problems and that really actually helped me prepare a lot um, you have to pass business cases um, at these top companies where they get present cases and you have to solve holistic problems both quantitatively and qualitatively and the biz and actually I, I made a lot of jokes with the, my uh, professor during my capstone how um, you know, both out, my, my, my prep prepared me for the class, but the class 
preparing for the prep, you know, and, and they kind of like, uh, it, we had a lot of fun making jokes and I actually gave me an opportunity to really help build out new ways to approach doing business cases in the class based on what I actually got to learn. Um, on the career side, um, you know, actually um, the finance side really prepared me for a career in startups. Um, I'm a big proponent um, of cryptocurrency and decentralized finance. I think it's a bright future in the world. Um, and I um, helped the startup, you know, build checking accounts that pay 10 to 23% annually um, in, in, uh, in, interna in international banks. And now, you know, I actually use my, um, we take a class called derivatives finance with uh, either Professor Stefan Jurek or um, Stephen, Stefan Loeb. And I had a lot of great conversations with um, Loeb about derivative finance. And I'm actually using the conversations we had in the classes we taught to re-innovate how you actually see derivative finance and actually create, um, derivatives are very expensive options and, and uh, um, uh, puts and calls. I'm making a zero cost options puts and calls that cost zero dollars and protect the portfolio 100%, which is innovative um, in so many levels and paying consumers for buying the risk off, um, you know, rather than uh, an insurance company. Um, and it's just a great example showing how, you know, working with Loeb in derivatives finance, one of the toughest classes you can take, in my opinion, it's, it's crazy, um, you know, really taking that and really honing in and, and using the knowledge um, to really solve real problems in the world. And I'll brag on John a little bit. He's a member of Spiffy. And our Spiffy organization, which is the student managed investment portfolio, student managed fund, just surpassed four million in assets that these students are managing as they invest real funding from the foundation and learn as they go. But four million places us as one of the largest student managed investment funds in the nation, if not the world. So, congratulations to you too. All right. All right. So, um, so uh, Nicole and, and John and, and Dean Gilbert have talked a little bit about uh, why you should study at the Maine Business School. We think uh, the Maine Business School mirrors the University of Maine in a lot of ways. We're a school of 1,200 plus or minus undergraduate students, a little bit over 1,200 this year, which is great. Uh, so that makes us big enough to give you a lot of options including things like joining student clubs and different courses. We have multiple sections offered of most courses every year. Um, and yet you're not gonna end up at a place where, uh, where you're gonna be enrolling in a class of you know, 900, 900 students. And so it creates an opportunity for you to really become part of a community uh, and to stand out and find your own way. Uh, one of the things that we think really sets us apart is, is our advising center. And so Cindy's gonna talk a little bit about that. Yes, what does set us apart, um, even across the campus at UMaine, but a lot of business schools, is that we have a professional academic advising center. So every student at the Maine Business School is assigned a professional advisor. There are three of us, but you're also assigned a faculty mentor. So the faculty mentor is to help you if you're trying to decide which elective to take to help you on this career path, if you're trying to network to get an internship or network for a job after school. What your professional advisor does is make sure all the I's are dotted, the T's across, that you're taking courses in the correct order to keep you on path to graduate on time. That is the goal of our office, is to make sure that if you want a double major, if you're looking to do a minor or a concentration on top of your business degree, that you can get the courses in the order you need it to graduate in four years. One of the things that is, uh, is a really important part of the Maine Business School is our diversity. So we have faculty that hail from uh, six continents. We have students from more than 34 countries. It's, it's incredible the number of people that you'll meet uh, from all over the world and certainly all over the, the United States. And that diversity is really important. Diversity has been uh, is, is something that just opens your mind and expands your opportunities to think in new ways and to learn new things from people who have had different backgrounds and different experiences than you. And it's so important to us that we, we created, uh, the faculty came together and said, we want, a, we want a statement that we want to put on the wall that, that enshrines our commitment to diversity. And so I want to read it to you because it is really an important part of who and what the main business school it is. 
is. It says, we believe that supporting, respecting, and appreciating diverse perspectives and experiences strengthens our community, challenges our assumptions, and yields better decision-making in business and in life. We're committed to ensuring that all members of the Maine Business School community feel welcome, heard, and engaged, and we try and live that every day. It's a core part of who and what we are. And, and so what's really exciting for you is that we have some new opportunities coming in 2021 that we've never done before at the Business School, and we're excited for you to join us. Um, the first is a Bound for Business trip. So we're partnering with Maine Bound, which is run out of the rec center uh, at the University of Maine to take on that four day long canoeing, camping and hiking outdoor adventure alongside one of our exceptional faculty members, Stefano Tiarino and our internship coordinator, Taylor. And they're going to go out with you. And then uh, the, the, those students that participate that, in that experience will come back and they'll have a dedicated section of introduction to business where they really deploy what it is that they thought about and learned about and experienced and think about how, what is the world of business framed through that outdoor industry management kind of perspective. We're also standing up our first living learning community, creatively named the Maine Business School Living Learning Community. Uh, it's an opportunity for 60 incoming first year students to live together on one floor, all business students, uh, be enrolled in courses similar to one another, get a, access to extracurricular programming, not too much, but a little bit of touch points where you can interact with both faculty and staff throughout the year and, and really get to learn about business as a community and build some of those relationships that will uh, form friendships throughout the rest of your life. And then and then, kind of the last part of what's new and exciting about 2021 is that we're really focused on uh, deploying technology to help you get the skills that you'll need to be successful as you leave the business school um, and you're, you're pursuing your degree as, as John and Nicole will be soon here. Um, but we're also training you in, in kind of the state of the art research. So one of the things that the University of Maine is really standing up that is incredible this year is called a research learning experience in the first year. And so in your management 101 class, whether you take it the fall semester or the spring semester, you will get to experience doing research and be able to start learning how do we use research? How do businesses use research to inform the decisions that they're making? So that's been a little bit about why the University of Maine, why business as a degree, why the Maine Business School is a place for that business degree. Uh, we, we didn't emphasize accreditation perhaps enough, but it's a gold standard. Uh, and you're beginning to put, oh gosh, from all over, thank you uh, for putting from Connecticut, Massachusetts, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Maine. It's, it's what you'll find when you get here as well. It, it's wonderful interest. So if you have questions, about student organizations or what it's like to live in a dorm or whatever you're thinking of and wondering about, uh, we probably have somebody who can give you some insight during this meeting. Feel free if you don't wanna speak out loud, you can send a question in the chat and I will read it for everybody. Um, but if you have a question, please feel free to unmute yourself and, um, and ask, this is your opportunity. Melanie, if I may, I think this is a good segue uh, just to kind of remind some students uh, as an accepted student, or even if you've already confirmed to attend the University of Maine this coming fall, uh, a, a couple of um, uh, dates and reminders. So number one, if uh, the deadline to submit uh, your enrollment deposit to confirm your uh, enrollment here at the University of Maine this coming fall is May 1st. So you do have until May 1st to send in that enrollment deposit through the admissions office. Um, I wouldn't suggest like waiting until May 1st actually to submit that deposit, but you do have um, some time to, uh, to confirm your deposit here at the University of Maine. 
I also wanted to mention that May 1st is also our deadline for submitting your housing application. So as an accepted student, you can actually submit your housing ap application to the University of Maine uh, without any commitment, you know, um, so you can do that. And the deadline is May 1st as well. Uh, again, uh, two dates uh, or one date is May 1st, which is the enrollment deposit deadline to confirm your spot here at the University of Maine, as well as the deadline, preferred deadline for housing application here at the University of Maine. What I'm gonna do, uh, Melanie, is actually uh, uh, put in my name, my email address, um, just so that if uh, any students or parents listening in tonight, if you have more questions about the enrollment deposit or the housing application, please feel free to um, um, contact me directly and I would be very happy to help you uh, with that process. Thank you, Ace. Thank you. I'll I ask have a question first though. With what you just said with the housing application, would they note that they wanna be part of the living learning community? And so if they submit a housing application now, if they wanted to be part of the business living learning community, they would they could note it on their application and then um, seal the deal May 1st, but they'd be, they'd hold them a spot. Yes, Dean Gilbert, that is part of the uh, housing application is to uh, indicate our different options for our living uh, and learning communities here at the University of Maine, including the Maine Business School Living and Learning Community. Yeah. Thank you so much. We have a chat question. Um, John wants to know if students are currently living on campus and if in-person tours are available right now. Some students are living on campus. They are socially distanced and we are testing, the whole community is, is testing uh, to keep our bubble safe and to keep the incidence rate as low as possible. So uh, I'm not sure about in-person tours the, I, so that, that's a question for you, Ace. I, I don't know if in-person tours have been re-established. Yes, uh, Dean Gilbert, we are actually developing a, um, a virtual campus tour uh, this spring that we hope to announce in a couple of weeks. We certainly will be emailing all accepted and confirmed students about this opportunity to be able to uh, view the campus in person. The way I'm going to describe it is we're not actually going to be walking all around campus live, um, but it is going to be live and we're going to be having an anchor uh, here at the admissions office and then we'll be relaying it to different spots on campus. Uh, for example, the, the library, uh, classroom, also the student union, a sample room uh, that students are going to be living in in the fall. So. It, it's almost like a news broadcast where uh, we're gonna hold these uh, campus tours. Now, I, I do wanna inform everybody uh, that in the summer, uh, there has been talks with the university system uh, as well as UMaine and Orno, of course, about possibly being able to open up uh, in-person campus tours. So uh, please uh, be patient with us. Um, uh, we hope that we are able to uh, conduct these on-campus tours uh, at least this summer, uh, but we will definitely inform students any opportunities to be able to uh, get to know more, uh, more information about the University of Maine, either virtually this spring or in person this coming summer. So. I'll also note that we have a video on the UMaine Business School website um, that is a small tour of the building. Um, and I will follow up with all of you with an email with a link to that um, probably tomorrow. We have another question. Um, what percentage of graduating business school students are finding employment? The estimate that comes from the University of Maine approach, it's not a perfect approach because the response rate is not as high as I'd like to see, but the estimate is 90% of students are employed at graduation, but that is based on a sampling effort. So a more accurate statement would be 90% of the sample of students who responded to the survey 
were employed on the date of graduation. We just finished our own survey of current students and find that about 60%, if I'm remembering it correctly, are working part-time while they're going to school. So they're finding employment and are able to balance the uh, part-time work as well as internships and going to school from some. What am I missing, Jason? Yeah, so we, it is uh, 60 something percent. I'm not sure, I don't remember the exact number either, but it's 60 something percent of, of the people, of the students who responded, which was almost 200 undergraduate students. Uh, of those that responded, 60 something percent of them are working. Uh, almost 80% of them had had a job in the last year. So we do see that. Um, and to kind of jump a little bit down to uh, Finley's question, mm -hmm. We do see a lot of engagement with internships. So we have uh, Taylor uh, Ashley, who is our internship coordinator. He is working systematically with students, uh, both one-on-one -on -one and in groups to be able to help with professional development skills, as well as to identify internship opportunities. I just uh, kind of got an email from one of our faculty today saying, gee, I'm seeing a lot of emails from Taylor about internships. Can he like coordinate these? Because it's a lot. And so we have a lot of opportunities that are really coming forward. Um, great and exciting opportunities for students to, to really get involved and in developing their own professional acumen, even while they're still uh, pursuing their degree. So that is something that we're, uh, we're really aggressively pursuing is supporting that kind of career readiness um, and, and getting people experiences uh, while they're going through their degree. Thank you. We hope, to, we hope to repeat bear tricks where we would take a busload of students to Portland, some of the firms that have a lot of uh, graduates from the main business school with them and employed include Banker Savings and Loan, WEX, IDEX, Tyler Technologies, Unum, Mimic, you know, so the large employers, as well as the accounting firms, uh, both in Maine and throughout New England, as well as, I mean, there are others that I'm not calling to mind. There was a whole list of companies uh, where our students go and, and create new ground. Another landed at Amazon, uh, wanted, got an internship, and then turned that into the position, the job position within two years of graduating is receiving a promotion and moving up. And another did an internship in Seattle and is employed there. I just can't think of the company. So it's very diverse and, and doors are open knowing that you're coming from a quality program. So Thank you so much for that answer. I have one that probably Ace can answer about housing. Um, Daniel asked, um, put his friend on the housing form and his friend put Daniel on the housing form. So how will he know that he has been, that they have been confirmed for the same room as roommates? Yes, so um, in terms of the housing application, it's actually open now to students. Um, you know, if you, um, uh, I guess I'll kind of mention on how to actually get there in a minute, but to answer the question directly, so the housing application is open now for accept students who wants to apply for housing. Now, we understand that some students know uh, uh, friends or um, possible roommates that they wanna be roommates with in, in the fall. So the only thing that you have to do is yourself to indicate the uh, person that you wanna room with and then that friend to indicate in their housing application that they want a roommate with you. So just make sure that you indicate each other in your housing application um, to be roommates this coming fall. And I will tell you that our housing department do honor that request. So as long as you request each other as roommates this coming fall, they do honor that and recognize that in the housing application. Now, as far as getting into the housing application, Melanie, um, while uh, we move into the next question, I will uh, post the uh, website on the chat on the actual website to get into to apply for housing. Uh, and ultimately, uh, July 1st is the beginning of when the housing services inform our students via email um, 
of their roommates and their housing assignments. So again, in the meantime, I will um, search for the link and post that on the chat as Thank far you. as the housing application. That's very helpful. Um, I really like this question for Miles and I'm not sure um, who wants to tackle it. Uh, what does the first semester of classes look like for freshmen? Cindy. I yeah, so the advising center will register all incoming first year um, MBS students in their classes. So a typical first semester is obviously we try to get you into intro to introduction to business. You'll be taking um, e microeconomics. We would be putting you into a general site course, public speaking. These are foundation courses that all business students have to take. So some of these are prerequisite courses for other classes, upper level classes. So this is the difference when you're in a professional setting with advisors is we're trying to start you off on the right foot. That way each semester and by the time you're in your junior year, you're just breezing through the upper level courses. So we'll give you 15 credits. We'll throw a gen ed course in there. Um, if somebody has AP credit, make sure you have those scores sent directly to the University of Maine. If you are registered for a course through a college or community college that is associated with your high school, you will need to contact that institution and have them send an official transcript to UMaine so we can know about those credits and get those credits uh, posted to your transcript here. So any schedule adjustments, everything is done right through the Professional Advising Center. Now, Nicole, would you say that you breezed through your senior level classes? I would not say so. <laughs> I took the route of going abroad my junior year when that was still possible. Um, so when you go abroad, you don't always have classes that match up perfectly, but administration and the advising center does the best to make sure that you get your credits accounted for and that you're not too far behind. Um, so when I got back, I made the mistake of having to catch up on accounting and finance. I took four core classes all in one semester, so it was not a breeze at all. <laughs> Study abroad. Where'd you go? I went to Verona, Italy. <sighs> Love Italy. Yeah, right. They, Months uh, before coronavirus. The and the other question there, I know I'm I'm taking your but to see that I'm not quite sure. I do believe it is first come, first serve oh. for the 24 students in yes. camping week and for the 60 students for the living learning community. So you you have the benefit of being our first accepted students uh, orientation, and you'll have the housing applications so you can sure. request it. And then I'm sure we'll have a waiting list because uh, it's we we hope this grows uh, year after year. But uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to having the students that go on the outdoor adventure, camping and hiking. They would then be in a course together of Management 101, studying the business of the outdoor industry. I just think it will be fascinating. I I, I want to go back and do that. But. And I will be sure in the follow up email after this event to include a link um, to sign up for the um, to, to indicate that you're interested in the bound for business trip. Um, if you're interested in the LLC that's through that's through housing that's a different form but I'll, I'll send you a link for that so that you can check it out. Um, Miles wants to know is there a placement for math class and what is the basis for finance majors. Mm. Yes, uh, we do require students to take a math placement exam. It um, is done through a system called Alex now. We're hoping that everybody will score at least the 61 on that exam, which will place you into either the Applied Mathematics for Business and Economics course or Introduction to Calculus, which is one of the required math classes for every main business school student. Um, for Finance, you're taking the same math classes as the other students. Everybody, like I said, takes the applied mathematics or intro to calculus. Everybody is required to take statistics. So those are the two math courses um, and you will take, everybody takes the same business manage uh, finance course as a core class. And then the finance majors go into upper level finance classes. And Cindy, if I'm not mistaken, um, once students decide to enroll at UMaine, they get information on how to take those 
the yes Mexican. i think once students are matriculated they will have the opportunity to take that math placement exam before you're done high school so we ask students try not to wait because you don't want to use it or lose it we wanted to, you to take that as soon as you can and so, Jonathan, can they apply to join spiffy as freshmen or as their as first year students i should say absolutely or, and if they want to sit in tonight at 7 p.m i told my directors um I am making an executive decision. If anyone wants to message me, we uh, we can. Um, we're actually having a bond pitch from a sophomore um, um, potential okay. director, so it'd be good for you guys if you guys are interested in Spiffy to start meeting um, some of the people. So, if you're in finance to begin, I mean to start out as a first year student to go to the meetings and to learn and be able to meet the seniors and juniors who are running Spiffy in that four million dollars. If you've got an interest or think you do in finance. Uh, then that's a great way to get to know uh, the people in that field. And there are similar student organizations for marketing, uh, for management is the, for women in business, for uh, Undiscovered Maine. You can follow the link for Undiscovered Maine. That is a student organization that tries to promote some areas in Maine that don't see as many tourists uh, or money. So it's a uh, and MBS Corps does nonprofit outreach philanthropy work. Uh, and there's an accounting organization. So begin looking early. If you think you're interested, it'll tell you a lot just to meet people who are further along the path in their academic career. And you can ask them what it's like and how'd you survive taking accounting and finance in the same semester? How'd you survive being in Spiffy and doing everything else? So, okay. Back to you, Melanie. Um, um, Melanie, if I if I may interrupt, I'm very curious as coming from the admissions office because we're always promoting Spiffy uh, for any students uh, interested in finance or accounting at the University of Maine. But Jonathan, can you briefly uh, describe what four million dollars really means for for our for Spiffy, our institution? and then how we compare with other organizations like Spiffy? Um, so Spiffy is very unique. Um, there are a lot of top um, re research universities and universities have investment funds run by students, whether it's Georgetown, Harvard, um, or others. UMaine um, is definitely not the largest, but it's definitely very well known um, for how they go by doing it. I was very proud. I actually founded and built um, an investment fund for my previous college and we listed one of the colleges we were proud to be was uh, Harvard, Georgetown, and UMaine um, every year after year we were, uh, for rate of return. But we only had 400K. 400K is much easier to make a lot of money with than 4 million when it comes to rates. Um, we, uh, UMaine started actually at the beginning of the year with 3.2 million. And over since COVID, we've expanded to 4 million, which is incredibly impressive. When you really put that into perspective, that's 8 million, 800,000. You take 800,000, you divide it by um, 3.2, you can you can see the rate of growth and it's astronomical. Thinking 10 to 20% is the, 10% is the average for a high rate growth account annually. Um, what's really impressive about Spiffy is it's actually student run. A lot of these different funds are are not um, are not fully student run. There's professors running it. Um, Professor Sebastian Loeb is our advisor, but he does very minimal work. The biggest contribution, I think, he actually made a huge contribution. But the biggest contribution that he's really made to Spiffy, like directly, um, that didn't like uh, that wasn't done by students, was he he advocated building a protective put option. Um, to protect if the market crashes. That's the only thing he's done this whole year. You know, he, he lets us do it um, and he trusts us. And um, so we've done pretty well um, overall. Uh, $4 million is a lot of money. Um, you know, Harvard, I think has 30, uh, Fordham has um, 12. Um, but what's really, um, you know, uh, I had 400K, you know, it's nothing compared to this for like what I had to do with. Um, what's really cool about Spiffy is that like Fordham, if you're trying to join their portfolio group, they require you to have a 3.8 GPA and you can't even be considered until your junior year. Um, and there are other universities that have very crazy criteria where they won't accept you. Um, UMaine, it's anyone can join, which is kind of cool about UMaine. You, um, you can join, you can learn, you can grow. You know, if you, based on your experience, you might, if you want to go in and grow in knowledge, get your Bloomberg um, knowledge, you know, you'll probably like, you know, we have, we have a, a roles in a tier system. You know, we have directors, we have sector analysts, we have analysts under sector analysts. So like if you're gonna be a spectator and you can move up very easily and there's real opportunities to grow. 
but if 4 million currently is our benchmark, we've grown so much over the last couple of years, like we have a lot of room for growth, a lot of cash still on hand and uh, it's got a bright future. Nicole is involved in a lot of the um, other main business school student organizations. And I can imagine that they are probably also just as welcoming. Yeah, um, there are so many, so many great organizations at MBS. And one of the best decisions you can make for yourself for your future is joining organizations. Um, I, as John mentioned earlier, uh, we're both transfer students. And something that I was really missing at smaller colleges is opportunities. Um, when I came to UMaine, one of the first things I did was join clubs. And it is so invaluable. It's one of the best things you can do, like I said, for yourself and for your future. And one of the main focuses that uh, I always encourage for joining uh, business clubs is that they usually have some type of structure, like executive structure. So being able to get into those positions of president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, or even on various boards that do planning for uh, advanced communications boards, marketing, that gives you real world experience that you'll be able to bring into your job with you. So um, I've found that managing a budget as treasurer of MBS core taught me a lot about Excel, taught me a lot about passing information down to the next person taking over the budget and also being able to, to relay the, the quantitative information to the rest of the group in a qualitative way. Um, other than that, uh, Women in Business is a really great club. It's an inclusive community and we provide a lot of opportunities for women and men to learn about uh, experiences that some of our alumna have had in the past. We've had um, Melissa Smith, who is the CEO and North American president of WEX come in and speak with us. We had a luncheon with her a few years back. We've had Heather Firth, the CEO and co-founder of Orna Brewing Company and Woodman's Brown Grill come in and share her story with us. She's also an alumna and we have done some really great events like a, a documentary screening of Nevertheless with Beta Gamma Sigma, which is the Business Honor Society. And uh, we were able to get a producer director question and answer live panel right after, which is pretty awesome. Great. Um, I see I have another question here uh, in the chat that is probably for Cindy. Um, Daniel is taking AP micro and macro economics this year, as well as honors calculus. Would he have to take those again? So for the macro and micro, as long as you earn at least a three on the AP exam, you will get credit for microeconomics and macroeconomics. You would not have to retake them. For the honors calculus, so honors classes, unless it's an AP class that you're going to be taking an AP test for, you're not gonna be able to get college credit for an honors calculus in high school. What it will prepare you to do is to take that math placement exam. The math placement exam does not award you credit. It places you in the correct course. So you would probably be all set you know, and do very well on that exam to be able to go into the required math classes. Thank you so much. Um, there's another question about software that we use at the main business school. Is there any business software used that is not provided to students? That's a good I don't. Question. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think that uh, there might be softwares that you need to deploy as part of a textbook. So I know in our accounting 201 class, they use a Wiley online platform, which is bundled with your textbook. So in that case, you would be kind of paying for access, but it's really it's the platform. It's the underlying knowledge. It's not the software, but the main business or the University of Maine has access to Microsoft Office and a whole variety of other programs that you would use. And then in the main business school, we have invested in software that you would use in other courses, um, giving you free access to things like Grammarly, free access to the Wharton Research Database Service, which is uh, you would likely use in your finance class in your junior year, um, as, well as, as well as a whole variety of other software packages that have student 
uh, promotional programs like um, uh, SAP, which is a uh, which is a software that is used in information systems. So the the software itself um, should be uh, cost free. Again, you might have to use an online book or something like that. But the software is we we try and really support students in that regard. Good question. And they excel certification. Uh, we're we're offering. In BIS 105, it's a one semester hour course and you're offered the opportunity to take the certification exam through a Certiport Certification Center, the first in the state. Uh, and at this point, 75% of our students taking BIS 105 for winter term passed the certification exam first try. So it, it's working very well and it's a nice way to begin to start out to increase your skills in Excel and then to go on in marketing to SPSS or to, there was a whole string on, on Corey's slide today uh, that I didn't even understand all that was there, but there are several software packages, but I do believe they're, they're, with, they're embedded in the course. Uh, th there may be something you have to pay for that I'm not cons that I'm not thinking of or not aware of, but I don't think I don't think so. I think we're trying to also infuse technology analytics software packages throughout the curriculum so that you learn new things and are comfortable once you graduate. We just polled our alumni: What are you using, and were you prepared while you were at the main business school? And they did feel prepared, mainly to say they were prepared to learn the next software package they were expected to learn on the job. And so we, we won't be able to teach you everything that, that you'll run into once you graduate, but the process of, of learning the different packages, using them and applying them well, uh, will, will serve you well. There's also a Bloomberg terminal in finance uh, in the capital markets trading room. I was gonna say there is some software loaded onto um, our student computer labs. So the main business school does have computer labs that students can use. Uh, you have free printing in the Donald P. Corbett Business Building as a business student. So there are opportunities there that we do try to keep those very up to date with um, software that the faculty may be using. All right. That was the last of the questions in the chat. Does anyone have any Last minute questions, we have about 10 minutes left before the hour is up. Um, feel free, um, Dean Gilbert, Dean Harkins, if there's anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to talk about, um, please. This is a welcoming community. So the I'm proud that y'all are here as accepted students, learning, getting information, wherever you choose to go, the process that you're in right now is the right step, in my opinion. I'll just invite you to take a real close look at the University of Maine. They're very authentic people, down to earth, working hard, friendly. It, it's a culture that feels as if you belong, is the way I would describe it from the faculty that you meet to the staff that you encounter and to the other students that you'll be in classes with. Uh, it's a very great place to spend this time to complete your degree, to have some adventures, to learn a lot and to be prepared for the rest of your career. But I um, thank you very much for joining us this evening. And Jason, did you do you have other last thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, I just want to uh, certainly double down on everything you just said and 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 tell you that we think studying business is exactly the right thing to study no matter what it is that you are going to do with your career and that research suggests that you will do a lot of things with your career right no matter what it is having a business degree especially a broad-based business degree where you're exposed to all of the different aspects of business is going to serve you well, no matter what it is that you do. So studying business is is phenomenal, um, and and I can't encourage you to do it uh, enough. Um, we had one final question. Do you want to talk a little bit about um, our new internship coordinator and um, how we promote um, intern 
I think I internship opportunities. That says That's entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. Oh, I'm sorry. Entrepreneurship. Stop opportunity. trying to turn things into internships. Entrepreneurship. <laughs> I is really feel strongly about the internship opportunities here. I guess. Jason, why don't you talk about the entrepreneurship um, opportunities? And so that's your forte. Yeah, so there's there's a lot going on in entrepreneurship on campus, uh, really, and then certainly in the business school. We have a concentration in entrepreneurship uh, where we focus on giving you access to and teaching you about both running a small business, uh, whether it's managing it, starting it, owning it, whatever, as well as starting businesses like uh, like John was talking about with, I mean, maybe not that maybe not that extreme with crypto and international banking and, and whatever is going on there, but all manner and scale of, of everything in between. Um, so we, we have that concentration. There are lots of ways to get engaged uh, across campus, including uh, leveraging the uh, Foster Center for Student Innovation, where there's some innovation work. We have internal to uh, the main business school, um, faculty who teach uh, innovation, we're engaged in in those efforts, and then I actively work with entrepreneurs across the state. We've got great internship programs that are oriented at that, including one called the Innovate for Maine Fellows. So there's a lot of ways if you are interested in being an entrepreneur to really get involved and get exposure to and experience with entrepreneurship, even while you're a student. We had a key story written on a team, a group of people who became friends. One of them was a business student and they opened an oyster farming business. And so the business student was keeping the books, but it just in an accounting class helped him set up the books, but it, it just, uh, I agree. There's a lot of opportunities. We did just place an MBA student with the Advanced Structures and Composite Center. They've got the biggest 3D printer in the world. I think it's still the biggest in the world. I haven't heard that it fell to second any time, though they're expecting it. And so their next foray may be about printing houses for people. And the MBA is going to go help them in that entrepreneurial enterprise. So the scale up of the, on, the opportunities in entrepreneurship are a lot, as well as advisory board members that can provide insight uh, from their perspective. Nicole, did you have something you wanted to say? I was just going to say the story that Dean Gilbert just mentioned about the oyster farm. They're actually from my hometown and they are quite the big name around here. Uh, it's pretty cool what they do because they're both students at University of Maine and with very minimal help from one of their fathers, they run a really amazing oyster business. They're a story of my lifetime. I love that story that they, I mean, I, I just, I, I think it's Maine. I think it is typical Maine that they, you know, met friends, put themselves through school with an oyster business and then see where they go. I mean, it's, it's the world's their oyster. It's good. So no last questions, one year MBA work and what does it entail? Uh, the MBA program is a gold standard in, in we have increased our enrollment uh, quite a bit, and we're now reaching people across the nation and internationally, as well as from Maine and New England. It is ACSB accredited. Most of the classes at this point in time are eight weeks long, online asynchronous, but we also have classes in person, and we have classes online and synchronous. Uh, we just changed the core, so it'll be oriented a little bit more uh, than it was before to analytics and to the technological software packages that are required to stay ahead of the game. Uh, so it is 30 semester hours for the MBA itself, 33 semester hours if you want to have a concentration. And our concentrations in the MBA are very creative and avant-garde, you can get a concentration in outdoor industry management, in accounting, finance, analytics, in geospatial technology, in nutrition industry management. We're working on engineering management by this fall for a concentration, uh, and a couple of more that have probably slipped my mind. Ah, sustainability with the Muskie Center at the University of Southern Maine, and health systems management. 
And so getting the core of the MBA and then doing a concentration in something that really interests you, I think we'd probably help our MBA students design a new concentration if they wanted to uh, in a different area. Global policy is another one. It, it's just a great degree uh, to launch a career. I could have gone on for the last four minutes with that, but I, I, I could see y'all had heard enough. <laughs> Thank y'all very much. Ace, is there anything that you want to add as a last minute reminders for dates or times? Yes, so again, just wanted to mention that May 1st enrollment deposit deadline, as well as our housing deadline. I guess my final thought is that uh, the main business school, we uh, the admissions office and the main business school work very closely with each other as far as referring students, whether the main business school or admissions get the questions first. Uh, but one thing I'd like to offer for our students, parents, and family members that are listening in tonight, um, I am the only Ace Barrera in the admissions office. You see my face, you know my voice now. When you call the admissions office for any questions as far as your admissions, the admissions process, getting ready for school, or any questions about the university it may that I can help you refer to, whether it's the main business school, student life or auxiliary service, just please ask for me. My name is Ace and I would be more than happy to uh, help you any way I can to uh, make that, that transition going to college a little bit more easier for you. So thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. Thank you so much, Melanie. Thank you. Hope to see you this fall. <laughs>